Good evening. Welcome to Jim Chapman Live tonight on Rogers Television. And tonight we will meet the head of the Freedom Party of Ontario, Paul McKeever, who says the impending provincial election is generating no issues. Nobody seems to care much about what's going on in our province. We'll find out why he feels that way and what he thinks we should do about it. 672 1313. Back in a moment to talk with a man who believes politics are alive and kicking here in Ontario, Paul McKeever from the Freedom Party will join us right after this. A lot of political observers thought we were going to see a provincial election this spring, but it looks as though that's not going to happen. It appears now that it will probably be early in the fall. Ernie Eves is desperately looking for a platform, as far as I can tell. The Liberals are out there selling theirs, so is the NDP, and so is the Freedom Party of Ontario. They believe the time has come for them to make their move from a fringe party to a major player in Ontario politics. Paul McKeever is the head of the Freedom Party of Ontario and joins us tonight. Nice to have you back again. Thanks, Jim. Let me ask you about the, uh, one of the comments that, uh, that you put in some of the correspondence we've been doing here. So you don't think there are any issues really coming to the surface in this, and, and, and I think you're quite right about that. We're not seeing the uh, public grab onto any of the issues that the Tories are putting out, or the Liberals, or the NDP for that matter. They're all there. They've all got their position papers, Liberals perhaps most comprehensively at this moment, um, of, of, the, of the three of them, but none of them seem to resonate with the public. Why do you think that is? Well, I think right now the Ontario's in a lot of trouble uh, on at least three fronts. We've got some unrest, some disagreement in certain terms of education because of underfunding and also the desire for differing forms of education among some. Uh, healthcare is a real problem. No one's admitting how bad it is. And the same thing with electricity. Right now we're about $480 uh, million dollars deeper in debt, sorry, billion uh, sorry, million dollars deeper in debt uh, than we were back in November when these price caps were put in place and uh, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight and uh, right now both the Liberals and the Conservatives are basically holding on until 2006 hoping that nuclear will save them if the reactors come back online. So uh, there aren't any real issues to be brought to, the brought to the fore because they really don't have any solutions that they're willing to propose. Uh, ultimately um, if you look at their platforms all of them are proposing more state ownership, uh, more taxation, uh, I mean which is what the Tories are doing right now, taxing and spending in terms of covering the cost of the electricity that we're not putting on the bills anymore. And uh, you know, no one wants to step up to the plate and say, look, we've had our heads in the sand for the last 10 or 15, maybe 20 years on these issues. It's time for people to say, look, maybe capitalism has to take its, uh, take its free course. There are some people who would say about the electricity issue that that this is nothing new, subsidizing our rates is nothing new, and the proof of that is the $37 billion debt that was left over when Ontario Hydro was split up. That in fact we've been subsidizing electricity rates for almost as long as Ontario Hydro has been in business. Right. Why is it more significant now, do you think, than it was then? Uh, I don't know that it is any more significant now. I think it's, it was bad then. It was better for a period while uh, following the uh, May 1 uh, transition to deregulation. Mm -hmm. But there was no chance given uh, for the market to adapt to the fact that now you're going to have to pay for the electricity you consumed. There should have been more education for the consumer to realize that if they wanted to cap the rates themselves, they should have been entering into contracts with retailers and they were available at reasonable rates. Uh, instead, we saw a politically expedient solution. That is, let's not tell the public how much the electricity is really costing. Let's cap it at 4.3 cents, which doesn't mean that's all you're paying. It just means that that's all that's on your bill. Well, but people know that, though. I get the sense they don't care. And perhaps not. Uh, you know, if you, if you put it on the, on the company credit card for long enough, uh, you might forget that it's even there. But we are, we are reaching a point now where socialism it cannot, it's not, it's not financially feasible anymore. And that's why we're seeing the introduction of things like these P3s, public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. These were tried in the 1930s in, in Germany and Italy. Uh, they're nothing new. They're called, it's just called a, it's a form of socialism called corporativism, where the ownership of the, uh, you know, the, the systems, if you will, mm -hmm. the medical system or the electrical system is private, but the government controls the operation entirely. This is sort of the last gasp breath for socialism. When you can't afford to buy, the, buy any more reactors or put any more things together, you let other people put them together for you. You beg them to come in and put things together for you, but then you tell them how to run the things. Of course, it doesn't work. Nobody's coming in to build reactors. Nobody's coming yeah. in to build power uh, because they all know 
that the result is going to be that they're going to be told how to run those and they're not going to be able to make any profit. It's time now for people to get their heads out of the sand, and I'm talking about the people in government, and fess up to the public and say, look, capitalism needs to be allowed profit or perish is the rule in 2000. Now, how are you going to sell that to a province that has become very comfortable in the living in the lap of uh, the, the modified form of socialism that we have here? How is the Freedom Party planning on doing that? Well, look, you know, as I see it, we have a responsibility. Uh, maybe we have a bit of a luxury, not having a uh, reputation to lose, but only one to gain. We have the, uh, the, you know, the freedom to be uh, frank with the public. Uh, we will be as frank as we need to be, and that's 100% frank in this case, because uh, nobody else is willing to. We're going to see a few uh, proposals about writing off mortgage interest and uh, phased in over 450 years or something along these lines, just to keep the public voting Tory, thinking, well, if they're giving me a bone, uh, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, five years from now, some of our kids are going to be entering universities. Uh, some of us are going to be sick. Some of us are going to be retiring. Uh, some of us are going to be priced out of our homes for taxes. And uh, unless people like Freedom Party stand up and tell the public right now that it's time to get our heads out of the sand and make the difficult decisions now, then five years from now it's only going to be much worse. We're going to be there five years from now again. We're laying the groundwork now. We're the only party proposing capitalism as a solution. And uh, people like to believe the Tories are proposing capitalism. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at the, the at NDP, the Liberals and the Tories, their only solution is more public ownership of health care, more public ownership of schools, public ownership, public ownership, public ownership, which can only mean tax, tax, tax to fund them. Uh, that's not capitalism. That's socialism, as much as they want to wrap it up in a capitalist uh, rule. Well, it, can you sell your message if it turns out that a majority of Ontarians are socialists at heart? Well, uh, the, the thing about socialism is it tends to implode. So. Uh, just as it imploded in the Soviet Union, and we, we saw the uh, economic implosion there and the fall of the, uh, the wall, the Berlin mm -hmm. Wall, we will see the same thing happening in health care. In fact, we're already seeing it because these uh, last-ditch efforts to sort of get private companies to set up hospitals and hope like the blazes that uh, you know, they'll, they'll uh, live on meager uh, profits is really just a, a half measure before you finally admit that there is no money there to fund a socialist health care system. We're, we're up to our eyes in debt. There's no more room for wiggling. And this is just the last gasping breath in Canada of what we saw in a, a more radicalized socialism in, in the Soviet Union. Well, a lot of people would listen to you say that, though, Paul, and say that maybe you're overstating the case a little bit, that we don't see the signs of crumbling that we saw there, that we've got, right. uh, we have a healthy GDP or, or, or gross provincial product, if you will, that uh, economically Ontario is still fairly sound, that yes, we're heavily taxed, but we get a lot back for our tax dollars. A lot of it may be wasted, but we still, we, we get a lot of value. I mean, a lot of people look at the situation and believe that. Yeah. How, how, do you, how are you going to convince them? This is what fascinates me about your party. You guys yeah. are all so confident that you can get this message across. How are you going to convince people of this? Well, luckily, the economy is on our side. You can't fool the economy, and the economy will simply implode, at which point we'll be proven right anyway. But in the short term, I can tell you as an employment lawyer that we are very quickly, uh, because of the low dollar, finding most of our significant factories and et cetera being bought out, uh, really we're being turned into more of a branch plan economy. The reason that we have this perception that we're successful is because the Americans need to have cheap labor. Uh, we think we're being paid the same amount, but that's only because our dollar is worth 60% of what the American dollar is worth. We're actually uh, uh, cheap labor. And uh, un when we cease to uh, be uh, palatable place in which to set up uh, plants, and we're seeing that more and more, uh, the Americans will pull out, and then we'll realize just how poor we are. But we are, we are successful in Ontario despite our socialism, not because of it. And uh, more, more rules, I mean, if you look at the liberal, the liberal uh, handbook there, you'll find the word ban in there, or regulate, uh, more than you'll see anything along the lines of allow or permit. Uh, there are two ways in which to make people do something. You can either give them sugar, or you can give them a, a crack across the head with a, with a whip. Uh, Freedom Party essentially says, let people make a profit. Give them a reason to do something productive for society, and they'll do it. One of the realities of modern politics is that it's not inexpensive to run a campaign, particularly a provincial campaign with uh, how many members are you, or how many candidates this time are you looking at? Actually, uh, because of the delays in the election, we're probably going to be looking at uh, 52 plus, enough to form a majority government. Now that's going to take a lot of money to do that. Can you raise the kind of money that's going to be required? Well, I'll tell you, behind the scenes there are quite a few things going on. Um, there are, there's a lot of discontent within the Tory ranks right now, as you may know. It's, it's being made fairly clear that the uh, 
the personage of Mike Harris was very powerful in holding together a very fractious Tory party. We have approximately 40% of the party being uh, more or less Freedom Party type people who just feel that, well, maybe we should stick with the Tories because they've got the name that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And then there's the 60% in that party who really belong in the Liberal Party. Uh, and we're seeing this now with, uh, for example, Ernie Eves' advisors are telling him, why don't you do this sort of right-wing looking thing, and why don't you do that sort of right-wing looking thing, and by the time he gets to the stage, he drops the whole thing and says, well, it'd be a nice pipe dream, but I don't think I can deliver. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're going to see uh, more and more people jumping ship. We've already seen some. Uh, to Freedom Party because who else is offering capitalism, who else is offering ta real tax cuts, who else is offering choice in education, etc. And behind the scenes, and of course I can't tell you too much, but we have our uh, election planning on a provincial level as well as on the riding level, which involves uh, giving sneak peeks to certain people with a lot of money who uh, uh, find uh, this as a, as a special election. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are very unique circumstances. We have uh, a Tory party that is basically on the verge of collapse, just as the federal party was. I think you're going to see the, the, uh, at the provincial level the same thing that happened at the federal level. There's going to be a realignment. Uh, the Tory party will split. It will cease to be significant in Ontario. I, I'll put you at about 10 years from today, you will see a provincial Tory party that is no more powerful than the federal Tory today. Three, four seats. Uh, you will see more people joining the Liberals from the Tory ranks, and you will see more people joining Freedom Party. Uh, which is going to basically be the, the provincial uh, analog, if you will, to uh, what happened federally with the reform. I love alliance. a politician who's confident. We'll, uh, we'll watch it with interest as it unfolds. And Paul, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Jim. Paul McKeever with us tonight, the leader of the Freedom Party of Ontario. They say they are right for Ontario, and the time has come for you to take a look at them. We invite you to do that as you make your decisions as to who's going to get your vote come the next provincial election. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment to look back at the past season with our London Knights with the Rogers Television Colored Commentator and the 1290 CJBK Play-by-Play -play announcer Rick Doyle and Mike Stubbs uh, respectively and they'll be with us right after this.